All right, so let's check this out then. So uh, what they're asking us for this one is they're not asking us to graph it, um, but all they're asking us to do is find the removal of discontinuities, non-removal of discontinuities, our vertical asymptote, our horizontal asymptote, our domain, and our range. So um, for this, remember, removal of discontinuities are going to be our discontinuities that we can factor out. Our non-removal are, are going to be our discontinuities that we cannot factor out, right? So let's go and take a look at this. First thing, we want to see what are discontinuities. Our discontinuities, remember, are going to be our, um, where our values are going to be um, not defined in our denominator. So the first thing I can always determine is, what is my vertical asymptote, right? I always think that was always the easiest thing to be able to figure out. So I could do that equals 3x squared plus 8, sorry, equals 0, right? To find your vertical asymptote or our discontinuities, we want to figure out, actually, I'm sorry. But before I go to that, I look at this. Is there anything I can factor out in the numerator or in the denominator? No. So right now, I can't factor anything out. So therefore, non-removable, or sorry, removable discontinuities are not going to apply as far as I'm concerned right now looking at this graph. I can't see anything I can factor out. So Sadiq, that'd be very important for you to know if, to start off with. Now I want to be able to find my vertical asymptote. So I take my denominator and I set it equal to 0. All right. So I look at this. I have a quadratic, but I only have one squared term. I like having a quadratic with only one squared term because then I can apply the square root method. right? You can try to factor this by doing a times c, and then my middle term would be 0. right? If you're going to use the diamond problem, you do 3 times 8 over 0. But I don't really want to go through factoring. I can solve this by the square root method. I can subtract the 8. Since I only have one x term, I can just use inverse operations, which we call the square root method. So we look at this, and we have x equals plus or minus negative square root of negative 8 thirds. Can you take the square root of a negative number? No. No, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So therefore, does it make sense? Oh, well, we can. And it's an imaginary, right? It's i, right? So does it make sense then for me to graph my asymptote with i? No, that's not going to have a, a physical presence on our graph with real numbers, right? So our vertical asymptote, do we have a vertical asymptote right now that exists? No, right? So vertical asymptote, you can just say it's not there, not applicable. All right, we don't have one. Because when we try to find the vertical asymptote, it's imaginary. So your vertical asymptote is imaginary. So therefore, we're not going to have a vertical asymptote. So therefore, do we have any discontinuities? Do we have any values that we cannot be? And no. And think about that, guys. Look at our denominator. Does it matter what number I plug in for x? Is, it ever going, is there ever going to be a problem for it to be 0? No, right? No matter what number you plug in this, this is never, ever going to be 0. So therefore, we do not have any discontinuities. So when it asks for removable discontinuities, they're not applicable. Non-removable, not applicable, because you're never, ever going to get 0 in the denominator. No matter what number you plug in here, you never, ever will get 0. OK? Yes, Ashley? Got it? OK, good. So now let's go and look at the domain. So if the domain, if there's no discontinuities, our domain is going to be all real, real. Alex numbers. numbers. There we go. Good. Um, now let's go and look at our range, though. All right. So our range, we need to look at our horizontal asymptote. So remember, the horizontal asymptote, we had a couple rules. Right? The horizontal asymptote says there's a couple rules. When our degree, which in this one is 1, when the degree in the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, does anybody remember, Sarah, what the horizontal asymptote is? Y equals 0. Great. Okay, And then if that was flip-flop around, then we know that we'd have to, um, we say there would be no horizontal asymptote. Unless the difference was 1, then we could go and look for a slant asymptote. And if they're exactly the same, then we could take the leading coefficients of both, divide them, and that's the one, right? You guys got to know this for your test, right? All right, so we have the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So therefore, if I want to find the range of this function, the range is just going to be all real numbers except y cannot equal 0. There you go. Any questions on 20? Any other thing? Good? OK. All right, that's it.